Hello everyone and welcome to Home Schooling with Hera. I hope you all are doing great. In today's video, we shall learn about auxiliary verbs. Auxiliary verbs are a type of verbs. We also call them helping verbs because they often help us identify the tense, mood and voice of the sentence. Unlike the main verb, they don't tell us exactly about the action that is happening or the action that the subject of the sentence doing. Instead, they tell us what is the tense of our sentence, which means that what is the time of the action? What is the mood of the sentence? I'll describe it a bit later that what does it mean by a mood and the voice of the sentence as we know that we have active and passive voice. So these three things can be identified only with the help of auxiliary verbs because it's their job to do this. It's their function, right? So in English, we have three main auxiliary verbs. The most used is to be, then we have to have, and then we have to do. All the auxiliary verbs have their different forms. For example, present form, past form, and future form. So they because they tell us about the tense, that's why they have their present, past, and future forms. Let me tell you that we have an other group of auxiliary verbs, which I will tell you at the end of the video. For now, let's learn about these three, that how they are auxiliary verbs and how do they help us and identify the tense, mood, and voice of a sentence. So as I just told you that these three verbs have their present, past, and future forms. So the verb to be in present can be written as am, is, and are. Remember that verbs have different forms. So here, these auxiliaries also have different forms. The past of the verb to be is was and were. And the future of this auxiliary will be and shall be. Now, according to your subject, you will select these verbs. If your subject is singular, for example, I, so you will take the auxiliary am. And then the main verb and the rest of the thing. I'm teaching, I'm sleeping, I'm eating. If your subject is he, she, it, you will go for is. And if your subject is plural, we, you, they, you will go for are. Right? So in the be verb, we have uh, this technicality that it has three forms. But you also have to check out your um, subject when you are using the present form of the be verb. Now we have to have, this is also an auxiliary, a helping verb. The present form of to have is has and have. Has is used with third person singular. For example, he, she, it or any singular name. And have is used for anything else. Right? Third person singular are he, she, it and any singular name. For example, she has been doing dishes she has been doing dishes so here we have has as a helping verb as well as been been is the past participle form of the be verb i missed writing it here let me add it the past participle or the third form of be verb is been and you will find this verb in the perfect tenses a lot the next verb is to do. If you want to use the do verb with the third person singular, you will give es to it. For example, he does not drive. Now our main verb is drive, but this thing does is the helping verb. Without this verb, we cannot make a present negative sentence. He not drive doesn't make sense so we need the helping verb does here to make our sentence sensible right so he she it or any singular name will take does rest of the things will take do we need does and do to make negatives and questions for present tense the past form of do is did it also helps us in making a uh, past negative and interrogative for example did you enjoy the party did you enjoy the party now the word 
enjoy is your main verb and did is the helping verb it is helping to make our sentence sound a question i did not enjoy the party when i say i did not enjoy the party again the main verb is enjoy but did not is helping the sentence to give its meaning right so this is how did help us in past tense if you talk about the future tense of all these verbs you simply need to add will before them in future tense the main verb doesn't change we only add will or shall before the main verb and it makes sense i will visit you i will visit you no now if i simply say i visit you that will be a present sentence but as i add the helping verb will here it changes my sentence from present to future okay i will have submitted my work uh, before saturday we will talk about some future point when you are uh, when you are supposed to do something or going to do something now let's check out some examples which will help you to understand these concepts better as i told you that auxiliary verbs or helping verbs tell us the tense of a sentence so these examples are for this one my sentence is i am recording a video i is my subject recording is my main verb the verb am here is a helping verb or the auxiliary verb and if i just remove it for a while and try to read the sentence i recording a video doesn't make any sense i need to write here a helping verb now this helping verb can be am and this can be was and if i use the verb am it means i'm talking about the present tense and if i use here was it means that i am talking about the past tense so this is how the helping verb is helping us to understand the tense of the sentence i was watching a tv show this was is telling us about the time of the action watching is the main verb but was is telling us when i was watching i will take a short nap after my work take is the main verb will is telling us about the time when you will do this work you will do this work in future so this is how auxiliaries help us to identify the tense of a sentence now we have the examples of auxiliary verbs telling mood of the sentence what is the mood of the sentence mood means that if your sentence is uh, an imperative sentence an inter interrogative sentence or a negative sentence these are three common examples of moods we also have some other moods but let's see that how the uh, helping verb or auxiliary verb i'm missing an i here i'm sorry help us to identify this in the first example we have do read the book it means that we are giving some emphasis on the action of reading which is our main verb so read the book will be an imperative sentence but when we are adding do to it it means that we are giving emphasis on this action that do read the book so this do is telling us about the mood of the sentence okay that this is crucial to uh, for you to read the book don't do it now an order with a negative uh, helping verb do you want to do it this is an interrogation you can also make these sentences with have have you done it so these are some simple examples to tell you that what is the mood of the sentence and how helping verbs help us get the mood of the sentence now the third one is examples of auxiliary verbs telling the voice of the sentence we know that in english we have two voices active and passive and these uh, auxiliary verbs help us in making the passive voice of the sentence what is a passive voice just a little information about it if you don't want to talk about the subject of your sentence or this is not much important or you don't want to emphasize on the subject or the doer of the action 
you write your sentence in the passive voice, right? Let's see the first example. I am being chased by a stalker. Now let's see how I will understand this sentence. The first thing is am, which means that this is present tense. Being, B-E-I-N-G, this is the continuous form of the be verb. Chased by a stalker, chased is our main verb. And the rest of the thing is some more information, additional information about uh, this sentence. If I change this uh, sentence to active voice, so I will simply say, a stalker is chasing me. A stalker, this is the subject of the sentence. A stalker is chasing me. Right? So in passive voice, how the helping words are helping us? Because we cannot use the ing form of verbs in passive, we add the ing form of the verb be. And before that, we also have to determine the tense, whether it's present, past or future. So we add the form of the, the correct form of the be verb. Here it was present, so I used am. If you want to learn more about active and passive voice, I'm linking a video in the description box. Please check that out. This is simple, but yes, you have to learn it. Okay. Now the next one, the robbers were caught by the security guard. What is telling me that this is past? Caught is our main verb. And when I'm using were caught, it means that this is the structure of passive voice. Because I'm not saying the security guards caught the robbers. Instead, I am bringing the object of the sentence at the beginning. The robbers were caught by the security guard. The doer of the action is at the end now. Right? It will be done by Sunday. Will be. This is the auxiliary verb. Done is the main verb by Sunday. And this is the passive voice in future. Got it? So this is how B verbs help us in identifying the tense, mood, and voice of the sentence. Now let's talk about a tricky question. Can auxiliary verbs be the main verbs in any sentence? Yes. For example, I am a teacher. Now in this sentence, we only have a verb that is am. We do not have any other verb and it will also not make sense. It is This sentence is perfect. It's making sense. So here, the verb to be is the main verb of our sentence. The verb to be will only be the helping verb when you have a main verb after this. You have, have an other verb after it. The auxiliary verbs to be, have and do can also be used as the main verbs in sentences. It all depends on how they are used. Remember a tip? If you don't see any other verb after the auxiliary verbs in the sentence, it is the main verb, not an auxiliary. And I have just given you an example of this. Some more examples are, I am a teacher, this is done. This am is an auxiliary verb, but here it is working as a main verb. If I give a name to this, so it is verb working as a linking verb, okay? If you want to learn more about uh, different types of verbs, please watch my video. I have recorded a very descriptive video on types of verbs. It will surely help you to understand all about verbs. The link is in the description box. Second example for helping verb, working as a main verb. She has a pet iguana. Has. We know that has is a helping verb, but here has is showing the possession of she. So this is a state verb now. Okay. They have our football. They have our football. This is again telling us about the possession. This is a state verb, a main verb in the sentence. We do our work. Do here is the main verb of the sentence because it is telling us about the main action of the sentence, right? I hope this is clear so far. And now it's time to give you the last type of auxiliary verbs. That is the model verbs. 
Model verbs are so commonly used in our everyday written and spoken English and they are also auxiliary verbs. They are not the main verbs. After a model verb, you must have a main verb which is telling you exactly about the action of the sentence. There is one important point about model verbs. Unlike these three verbs, model verbs don't have their present, past and future form, right? Most of them don't have this. So uh, for this, we need to depend on the structure of the sentence. Let's check out some of the examples of the model verbs in sentences. I should leave now. The verb should is helping verb or if I say it correctly, it is a model verb. Leave is the main verb. Okay, this is the main verb. I leave now. I should leave now. Okay. He can drive a truck. Drive is a main verb. And can is the auxiliary verb. But which auxiliary? Model auxiliary verb. Okay. It is adding on to the meaning of the sentence. But he can a truck won't make any sense. We need a complete main verb after can. Okay. She might not come. Come is our main verb. And might is helping us to understand about this action. We could have finished it before. Finished is a main verb. And could and have together are auxiliary verbs. And with this, this is the end of our today's video. I hope you have got something useful from it. If yes, so please hit the like button. If haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you soon with something new. Take care. Bye for now. And don't forget to make it a great day. Bye.